So yeah, this is why I kind of wanted to do this one last, just because this is a whole museum of concept art and um, ideas that the developers had when making this game. And I kind of want to go through as much of it as possible. Stanley's computer. Uh, okay, so that's my office. Then the office that I went into. Office layout. This blueprint shows the office from the beginning of the game. The path from Stanley's office to the two doors was the first part of the game that was built. Sections have been added and altered throughout development, though the core layout remains almost identical to the first iteration, which is what I was talking about earlier with the Half-Life 2 mod, which is what this originally was. Uh, corridor. The pacing of this opening section was important to get right. This corridor has been moved and altered to make sure the player reaches the two doors in a good time. Cool. Office computers. I think that's just my office. The doors. Uh, the office doors and the buttons button sounds are selections of the sounds used throughout the game when buttons are pressed each sound is a mix of a keyboard stroke and symphonized tone oh yeah <laughs> mm, okay credits uh i'm not going to go for the credits just because um, we've already done the credits. Okay, let's go this way. Uh, no, let's not. <laughs> there is quite a lot here. So this is, I think this is pretty much the last ending to get. I think. Um, so I'm kind of just going to take my time here. Uh, maintenance room. The, an early version of the maintenance room. I mean, it looks pretty much the same, to be honest. Apart from the walls, apart from the walls on the floor and the ceiling. The printer. So it's office stuff. Oh wow. Oh, these were all the, uh, the posters, I think, wasn't it? Am I going crazy? Maybe it isn't the same image. Was that clock there before? I don't remember. How do I go back? Can you check for me? The point of Stanley Parable is to win. point of it is to lose. If someone could just get rid of the text, then maybe I could see what the game is about. Words, words, the larger words. These are screenshots of Stanley Parable. More endings, fewer endings, more narrations, fewer endings, more uh, Stanley, less Stanley. Uh, green light. In September 2012, oh God, is it really that old? Jesus. <laughs> In September 2012, we submitted the Stanley parable to green light, Valve's process of approving games for Steam. The green light page has only a series of cryptic photos, which are still enough to win the community's approval. Cool. See, I don't remember it being greenlit or anything. I think the only one I ever remember being greenlit on Steam was Five Nights at Freddy's. And that's going back a while as well. <laughs> that's going back a long time ago. Oh, this looks like Tron Legacy. Warzone. Cool. Okay. What's this say? Uh, early in development, we designed an ending where Stanley would end up on a battlefield fighting aliens. The action game would become sentient and would wage war against the narrator. We realised shortly after starting to build it that it was far too jokey and on the nose for the tone of the game. Um, plus, some people interpreted it as making fun of people who like shooters, which was not our intention. Eh. I guess you could see it in that way. I don't really see it in that way. 
What's in here? What's this? Dear narrator, how do you stay in shape? Sincerely, Martin the Michael the Rock Martin. <laughs> Could you tell me what the significance of blah blah is? What is this? There was a really long message. Am I Stanley? Are you spying on me? I don't have passion of my soul. What? How do you make a job? How do you make the worst game ever? What is the difference between a duck? Michael M again. Regarding your games in the work, dear narrator, I appreciate the previous Stanley Parable was a work of art and a standalone title. I appreciate the given. No, don't you? I hope it's good or better than the first one from a cool man. Okay. Uh, narrator emails. After the second trailer we sent out, we asked people to email the narrator for questions. While we had initially planned to use these in further promotional materials, we never found the perfect use for them. Here are a selection of these emails. I think they have actually found a use for them now because um, the ultra deluxe version of this game, which is basically the PS4 and Xbox um, versions, they were supposed to be released, I think, at the beginning of this year. But obviously, current circumstances have delayed that. Um, but I think they've actually included this e these emails and stuff in a recent video promoting the console release. And I think they've added like new endings and more content into the console versions, which is really cool. I'm really looking forward to that. That'll be fun to do. Uh, the lounge, an early version of the lounge. I quite like what it looks like now. It looks really, really weird. Oh, this is very portal like. There's a clicking noise. I uh, got to go. Okay, bye, Amber. Take care. Oh, okay, I've realised what the clicking noise is. Uh, the apartment timer. In a previous version of the choice leading to the apartment ending, a timer would give you 15 seconds to pick up the phone. Not picking up the phone would lead to a different ending. Cool. Uh, the cargo lift. The cargo lift was always intended to offer the choice of staying on or jumping to a different pathway. However, after this early version, we decided we always wanted the option of the player falling to their death, which is why I kind of did that one We'll try to do that one first, just to get out of the way. Uh, the cargo lift. This second version is functionally the same as what's in the final game. Pardon me. Um, but we wanted it to look more like a place where cargo was actually stored. Fair enough. Cool. Oh my god, it just keeps on going. <laughs> what's in here? Meeting room. Well, obey the space staircase. So, is this two options? One option. This was the different maintenance layouts. Um, the flow of hallways following the first two doors was important to get right since players would replay them so many times. We discussed a number of designs, but ultimately it was the simplest version that won, that won out. I mean, yeah, it makes sense. You don't want to make things too complicated, especially for something like this. Whoa! This is a cool one. Uh, for a long time, we had an ending that only ended when the player restarted from the exit menu. Uh, unfortunately, very few players realised this was what they were supposed to do, which was frustrating for everyone. Um, there is an ending where you, I think you can cheat in the game, 
But I think what you have to do, you have to do it from the console pad. And I can't remember how to do that. <laughs> so you actually have to open up the console pad and type stuff in. Zending model. What? Wait, what is this? The Zending model. I don't know what this one is. I don't recognise it. Uh, the Zending went through many iterations. This room represents the fourth version of the ending. And we thought it was complete, but decided to abandon and change it short again shortly before launch. Uh, okay, so that was just the concept one. Uh, Zending levers. These levers were originally a part of the Zending. Uh, the players would pull a lever and the narrator would describe what colour lever, lever they had pulled. Cool. There's this. Is this part of the demo? Uh, this screenshot depicts an early version of the ending known as the Zending, which was eventually cut and merged with another part of the game. So this ending I really like. Like this whole area I think is really cool. Oh, the X is there. Okay, let's do... Down here. Okay, hang on. Okay, so that bit I did. I didn't realise how big this place is. Whoa. Yeah, I didn't realise how place the big this place is. <laughs> well, I don't think... A countdown desk, one of the desks from the early version of the countdown ending. Ooh, can I press it? Oh. Nope. Monitor room elevator. For a time, the elevator in the monitor room could go up or down with the freedom above and countdown below. Um... We abandoned this when players found it too difficult to remember what was up and what was down and placed the two endings together instead. Cool. What's this? Oh, freedom ending. This is the freedom ending as it existed in beta. Oh, so this has never really changed. That's cool. So I find it interesting like what stage throughout... Oh yeah, we did... Oh no, we didn't do this. An early version of the countdown room. That looks cool. That looks like something from like um white house down or olympus is falling you know those government rooms looks like one of them that's cool it's interesting though what stays and what goes in a game what's across from here oh okay i see oh i've never been in here before so i'm guessing these are just all the officers uh, Stanley's office. From left to right, the evolution of Stanley's office over time. The first was created in November 2011, the second in March 2012, and the third in February 2013. It hasn't... Oh yeah, it has kind of changed actually. I think all you did was add a painting here and a couple of files. But yeah, it's interesting to see what like, stays and what changes. That whole section on the right I've already done. Did this change? Oh no it didn't. Okay so there's the exit. Cool. We did this. What's across here? Freedom ending. This was the very first incarnation of the freedom ending in the game's alpha. Again, apologies if you can hear the barking. I think the dogs are arguing at each other. Is this different variations of the boss's office? Yeah, scenes, screens from the development of the boss's office. Yeah. Let's go this way. Oh, okay. What's that here? Underground. An early version of the underground portion of the game. That looks kind of cool, but I do like that the escape thing is just randomly painted on now. Excuse 
Excuse me? It's the kind of thing you'd pick up on intuitively if you had even the most fundamental understanding. You would see that intuitively, though. But of course, you being you, you'll probably spend the next hour trying to solve it. Here, I'm just going to make this easy. Can't hear anything. Narration outtakes. Kevin writing the voice of the narrator recorded all the dialogue for the entire game, roughly three separate times over the two years of development. These are clips from the early takes that were not used in the final game. Okay, so it's coming from all over the room. I don't understand how that's working. <laughs> okay, I think we've actually done everything in this museum. So let's find the exit. It was back up here, wasn't it? Then I think this is the last thing we've got to do. I think. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control okay. one another. How they both wish to be free. I love how you're basically going to the like title screen. <laughs> 